the great verse 14 of Ephesians 5 on the practical side of Ephesians imperative command awake you that sleepest and arise from the dead body the old nature and Christ he's going to fulfill his part of the bargain if you and I do ours shall give thee light Christ shall shall is in the absolute tense Christ shall give thee light comes from God in Christ the light the illumination the enlightened eyes of our understanding heart see then pay attention see then that you you're responsible don't blame your grandma don't blame your buddy don't blame even your enemies I remember Dr. Will teaching us years ago, persecution never stops the movement of the word. It's unbelief. It's persecution just fires me up. I got hit by the adversary this week with some stuff out of nowhere. It just fired me up to kick his butt deeper. Understand more deeply from a discerning of spirit's point of view how he orchestrated and fomented these attacks on my physical body and how to kick his bow hunk us all over the block even better. Persecution never stops a true believing man or woman. just fires you up. See then that you walk precisely, exactly. Boy, I can't think of another adjective or I'd be throwing it at you. You know that. Circumspectly, precisely, exactly, rightly divided. There's one. Not as fools. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me if I do not walk precisely, if I just walk around with sort of this vague notion that there's a God, and, and I'm so proud of myself that I'll acknowledge that, yeah, there's probably a God, and maybe when I've tried everything else, I'll finally pray about it, and I think I'm so spiritual. What a bunch of arrogance. No, you're a fool. You're a doggone fool if you don't walk precisely and that starts with your mind the arena of competition and especially with all this Word of God that's out there and available right to this very moment not as fools but as wise want to be wise sure you do anyone that's got half a, a sound thought in their brain wants to have wisdom in life and not this pretended wisdom of the senses world where it's basically arrogance and hard-heartedness against the light not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil this came up this week talking with one of our remnant believers you know we're not here to pass the time here in the sunset years of our life in the autumn years of our days so a lot of us moving into our fourth quarter. We have worked hard the first three quarters so we can win the fourth quarter. I quoted the great football coach Bud Wilkinson on that a few weeks ago in a teaching. He disciplined his team to work harder than the other team in the first three quarters so you can really enjoy running away with it in the fourth quarter. And that required being better conditioned than any other team. The great Bud Wilkinson, they still haven't broken his record with all their football prowess and all their new equipment and all their new workout regimes. No one's ever won 47 straight college football games like Oklahoma teams in the mid-50s when I was a kid growing up. Bud Wilkinson, the great coach. Many great principles of life in that book I read about his life, written by his son, Jay Wilkinson, who was, was himself an All-American football player at Duke University. Well, anyway, work hard the first three quarters. We get to really enjoy the fourth quarter, and many of us are sort of moving in that direction, aren't we, in the autumn years, the fourth quarter of our lives, because we have walked circumspectly, and we haven't been fools but wise. We are redeeming. We are not passing the time. We are not killing the time. God, what a terrible word that is. Sheesh. We are redeeming the time because the days are harassingly evil. Wherefore? Another wherefore to apply. Look at the layerings of the wherefores here. Be ye 
not unwise, but in contrast, understanding. And that's our word, sunesis, a confluence where elements come together for us, what the passionate will of the Lord is. You see that in the world. Oh, I wish God would just tell me what he wants. I don't even know why I'm here. I wish the Lord would, well, what is his will? Who knows his will? It's all over the place. You got a big, thick book of his will. If you had a half a brain and knew how to work it, his will's all over the place. This is a command. I am to understand the passionate will of God. So there's no excuses. You can wallow and moan and cry and be proud of your mournful nature and be proud of your sadness and be proud of your crestfallen mindset and get everybody's sympathy and attention, or else you can obey. Gird up your loins like a man, like a woman, and obey the revelation. Like in Ephesians, understand what the passion of the will of the Lord is. If you seek the Lord diligently, he will hear you and deliver you from those apprehensions. Look at Hebrews 11, Hebrews James, 1st, 2nd Peter, Hebrews 11. What does it say here in verse 6? But without believing, not faith, that's a religious screw-up. Without believing, free will, fully persuaded mindset. Without believing, it is impossible to please him, and that is properly supplied, the word him. People do everything to want to please God except work his word, believe his word, and act on his word. All these other rituals of behavior, all these other pre-programmed, preset, quotable, catechismic prayers, cataclysmic prayers, that's not believing Anything you do mindlessly, Hail Mary, full of grace, Mother of God. Holy cow, you're calling in more devil spirits than a mangy dog has fleas when you call on Hail, Hellacious Mary. Because Mary's in the grave, her body's turned to dust, she's awaiting the return. She got born again on the day of Pentecost, she awaits the return. What are you praying to her for, knucklehead? because you've been taught wrong, or else you're so damn stubborn in your religious habits. Some devil spirit threw you a morsel in life once, 20 years ago, and you're hanging on to that like a beggar on the same street corner. And no one's given you a dime since then. But boy, I got a dime 20 years ago. Mother Mary threw me a morsel 20 years ago, so I'm hanging on to her. See how stupid people get? Hard-hearted, arrogant. Come on, without believing, and that's present tense right now. I might have pleased him five minutes ago, but if I quit believing right now, he's not pleased with me. And all I want to do is, like Jesus Christ said, my meat, my nourishment is to do the passionate will of him that sent me. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I fulfilled what he called me to do. I have kept myself faithful. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown or a garland of righteousness, and not for me only, but to them also that love his appearing. To love his appearing is to labor and believe and work day by day like you're convinced he's coming back. Well, we are. Without believing, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, remember, I sought the Lord and he heard me, must believe that he is, present tense, he is, the great I am that I am is, so that all that I am is in him. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of the great I am that I am, I am what I am. Are you getting confused? Nah. That means his word is. What's the eternal now? I'll tell you what it is. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. That's the eternal now. Wake up. 